grace to you and peace from God's beloved. Amen. If there's one thing that makes me crazy is when someone tells me that I'm not being realistic when I want to do something. Because why does someone else get to define my reality? And when someone says you're not being realistic, it usually means that they, the other person is projecting their fears and anxieties onto you, onto the other person. Because what is realistic for one person is not realistic for another person and vice versa. I'm thinking about over the last couple of weeks when we saw Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos launch into space to begin some sort of space tourism adventure something or other. We can talk about you know the value of that, what that brings, but uh, at some point someone probably told them that they are being unrealistic in making that happen, but they did it anyways. And also with their businesses, they both started out with nothing and they built these these massive empires. And along the way, many people told them that they were being unrealistic. And again, who gets to define reality? Who gets to define what is realistic? Do we take what is realistic so small to be so safe and secure, or can we move it beyond our scope of imagining? Because that's what I think was happening in today's Bible reading. We have two stories of Jesus being very unrealistic. And if we look at these two stories together, I don't see these as you know miracles in the sense of it contradicted the laws of gravity, although that is very important, or the laws of physics, the laws of abundance. But these two stories together are an indication that Jesus was challenging his disciples' notion of what is realistic and what is not. So let's look at the first story, feeding of the 5,000. Jesus goes to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. A crowd follows him. And, you know, their folks are really into what he's saying, right? The, these crowds are following him, but they forget to pack a lunch. And so the disciples look around and, and they're like, okay, it is really unrealistic to feed these people. We could spend six months' wages and we would barely scratch the surface. And hey, here's some kid over here. Let's go steal his lunch. But even that will not satisfy and feed this entire multitude of people. It's just unrealistic. And Jesus says, bring me the loaves and the fishes. Bring me the bread and those, those fishes and let's see what we can do. So Jesus prays over this and he has the disciples distribute what, what was in the basket this very small, realistic basket. And uh, Jesus did something very unrealistic. He fed a multitude with just a few loaves and a few fish. And they had tons left over, it says. So they gathered up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And so they saw that he was able to do something unrealistic to show that he was from God. Now let's look at the second story. Jesus walking on the water. The, the disciples, for some reason, go into the boat it's dark. They should know better. We heard this in another story from, from Mark. The lake becomes rough. The winds are blowing them around. And Jesus goes about walking on the lake, coming near the boat. And when they saw him, they were terrified. And again, Jesus says, it is I. Like, it's me, guys. You don't have to be afraid. And then they took him into the boat, and then they immediately found themselves on the other side of the boat. So again, is it realistic to just go taking a stroll across the water, especially rough water, or even whatever waters? No, it's not. It's, it's not realistic. 
but Jesus does it anyways. Are these two stories miracle stories because they break the laws of physics or, or what we understand to be true? Or, or are these stories miracles because they expand what is possible? They expand our vision of what the world can be and what we can do in this world. Because these stories are about Jesus challenging his disciples' small and limited vision into something great and expansive of what God can do in this world. These are miracle stories, not because they broke natural law, but because they enlarged everyone's sense of what the world can be and what they can do because we are part of God's kingdom, that we are part of God's people, that Jesus is living in us, therefore we can do what Jesus can do. So does this mean that we can you know, break the laws of nature? Can, can we walk across the water? Can we feed people with very little? Can we do what Jesus did in that way? You know, maybe, probably, in some way, I don't know. But what I think the story is telling us, that whatever vision we have for ourselves and for the world, it can be broadened. Whatever vision we have for ourselves, for the world, for our lives, it can be bigger. It can be more nourishing. It can be deeper than what we initially thought. Because one of the things I think Jesus teaches us in this story is to for us to expand what the world can be, what our place in the world is, what your place in the world is. Because during this COVID time, the temptation has been to shrink back into ourselves in fear, to shrink back into a comfortable world where we understand it, because the world outside was so uncertain we didn't know how this whole thing was going to play out. We didn't know how this was going to impact our lives. And so the natural response is to hunker down, get small, protect ourselves, make sure we're not hurt. Instead, Jesus says, no, this is the time to expand. This is the time to look broader. This is the time to go deeper. This is the time to bring your most and best self into the world. This is the time to develop your gifts. This is the time to see what is actually possible in the world without projecting our fears and anxieties out there, but trusting that God has made us strong enough. God has given us enough vision. God has given enough gifts. That God has given us, us enough in ourselves to build something beautiful, to build something nourishing, to build something that expands, to build something that goes deep so that we might see the world in eyes that we have never, ever expected before, like the disciples who fed the multitude with very little and the disciples who saw Jesus walk across the lake. Jesus expanded their consciousness. Jesus expanded their vision. And that's what I think Jesus has for us today. That's what I think God has for us today. That's what I think the Spirit is doing with us today as we are hopefully emerging from this COVID time to build something. Go into the world. Be a healing force. Go into the world. Present your best self. And as a church, Go into the world, connect with each other much more deeply. Go into the world serving others in their needs that they have as they are trying to figure out what their lives are like post-COVID. We might only have a few loaves, a few fishes, but that was enough to feed the multitude. Jesus walked across the water to meet his disciples when they were in the boat. So Jesus has met us in our boat, in our darkness, in our storm, so that we can make it to the other side and be the people God has called us to be, to be the disciples that God, uh, Jesus has called each one of us to be. 
I'm going to finish off today again with the book from um, Creating Space, um, a prayer book for peace in times of crisis and chaos. And I'm going to read a prayer called um, Letting Go of the Past, because I think this helps us in understanding how we receive the future that God has given us. And they begin with Hebrews chapter 11, for many of us a very familiar verse. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from the things that are not visible. In other words, we don't know what the future is going to look like, but God is leading us into, and that we have faith that we will be able to meet that future with confidence. And then they finish with this prayer. Let us pray. Covenant-keeping God, in Scripture we learn that faithfulness is an essential aspect of your character. We can trust your faithfulness that has been present from generation to generation. Though the thought of an uncertain future may seem scary, by clinging tightly to your strong arms, we can let go of the past. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the courage to walk boldly into the future to which you are leading us. Amen. And may this be so among us. Amen.